Tom here again today for Shifter, a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. And you see this thing? You probably have something like this on your bike. It's the gears. And if you're into this sort of thing, you can probably spend all day talking about the width of these gears and the distance between them and the ratio between the big ones and the small ones. But something happened to me a few years ago that made me forget all about that stuff around gears. I was riding a mountain bike on a mountain bike trail and the front derailleur broke. And rather than spend time to fix it, on a whim, I just took it off and threw it in the garbage. And you know what happened? Nothing. The next time I went for a mountain bike ride, I barely noticed. I realized that for all of these years I had been carrying around this front derailleur, maybe I didn't even need it. Essentially, I reduced the number of gears on my bike and it made almost no difference to my ride. Which got me thinking, do we really need all of those gears? Which got me thinking even more, what's the perfect number of gears on your bike? How many gears do you really need anyway? For years, there was this attitude that the more gears, the better. There were 24, 27, sometimes even more. But if you've ever had this many gears on your bike, you know there's a trade-off. You're carrying extra weight, all those gears come with maintenance, which means your derailleur has to be in tune, and if it's off a little bit, it can be totally frustrating. You know, a lot of the gear combinations between the front and the back were the same, or at least very similar. So even though there was 27, a lot of those were not that much different from each other. There was a time when you bragged about how many gears you have, but I think over time, we kind of realized that was a waste of time. Even in the mountain bike world, where you'd think a lot of gears would be useful because you're ascending mountains, there's been a move to reduce the number of gears. What's pretty popular these days is to not have a front derailleur on your mountain bike at all. Instead, you've got maybe 11 on the back. A one by 11 is something that a lot of people really like. It makes things more simple. You don't have to worry about that front derailleur. You don't have to worry about changing gears and the gear combinations between the front and the back derailleur. And you don't have to maintain another finicky part. One of the best things about losing my front derailleur was that I didn't have to think about it anymore. But if you're commuting, I would argue that even 11 gears might be too many. If all you're doing is trying to get to your destination, if you're not climbing hills, if you're not in it for athletics, if it's really just a transportation question, what's the perfect number of gears? Well, here's one opinion from my favorite book about cycling, Just Ride by Grant Peterson. He's got an opinion. He says eight gears is the perfect number. Why eight? So here's how Grant breaks down his ideal of eight gears. You need an extra high gear for going downhills. You need a normal high gear for going on flat roads or with a tailwind. You need a medium gear for riding at a moderate pace. You need a medium low gear for when you are carrying light loads or going up a slight incline. You need a low gear for steeper climbs or longer climbs. You need a really low gear for steeper or longer climbs than that. You need a really, really low gear for steeper climbs when you're carrying loads or you're a bit tired. And you need a ultra low gear, a bailout gear for when you have super steep climbs or you're climbing with a load or you're just super tired and don't feel like climbing. There you go eight gears. Grant usually offers good advice, so you could take his advice and live a happy bike life, I'm sure. But I'm not sure I agree with his assessment of eight gears. We'll get to that in a minute. There are also the purists who say you only need one gear, that one gear will force you to get stronger and become a better rider and you won't need gears at all. Maybe the most famous of these purists was the founder of the Tour de France who famously hated derailleurs. He resisted them for years. Here's a quote. Here's what he said about them. I still feel that the variable gears are only for people over 45. Isn't it better to triumph by the strength of your muscles than by the artifice of the derailleur? We are getting soft. So, yeah, sure, there's something to love about the purity of a single speed or one gear. There's no extra stuff cluttering up your bike. It's just a nice, clean ride. You just pedal. But also, I don't want to ride like that every day. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to get somewhere. It doesn't seem all that practical to ride that way every day when it's just for transportation. So for me, the correct answer to the question of how many gears is three. Three is the right number of gears for your urban bike. One for getting started. One for riding on flats. And one for climbing hills. That's it, three gears, it's simple. You won't spend your Sundays up to your elbows in grease, tweaking things to make sure they all run properly. You don't have to fiddle with multiple derailleurs. You don't have to do that internal math when you're riding to figure out what the optimal gear is. And you still have to rely on your thighs quite a bit, but not for everything. You've still got that climbing gear. So that's why for me, three gears is the right number for my urban ride. 
It just feels right. That being said, if you go for eight, go for it. If you like 27, go for that too. The most important part of any bike is that you ride it. So whatever works for you, make it fit your life. You may have a long commute or big hills or lots of wind. Let's not judge each other for the number of gears we've got other than to know that three gears is the correct number. Okay, hope that helped everyone. Thanks for watching. See you next time.